Hey everyone, and welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. Now, teaching the player how to, well, play your game is really important. Explaining the mechanics and introducing them to your world isn't easy. And I say this from a design and technical point of view. And so in this video, we will dive headfirst into Unity and learn some cool techniques to make fun, interactive game tutorials. So when starting out my game creation journey, all of my games had a rule page. In other words, I would explain all of my game's mechanics and interactions with a brick of boring text. And this, unless your game is extremely simple, is something to avoid at all costs. Not only will the huge majority of players never read through these lines and as a result fall the risk of never understanding your game, but it's also very boring and confusing. A much better option is to teach the player the game's rules via gameplay. So of course the simpler the game, the easier this is to do. In a basic platformer game, for example, where all the player can do is move left, right, and jump, you as the designer need only weave into the environment some simple instructions, telling the player which keys he needs to press to perform these classic moves. Another cool method to teach players your game is with pop-ups. For example, a bubble could appear stating you can move left and right with the arrow keys, and then you could wait until the player actually hits those arrow keys before moving on to the next rule. This way you're sure the player knows he can move left and right since you actually made him do it. This is especially great if you actually force the player to put that knowledge into practice right after. A super simple example of this is you teach the player how to jump and then force him to jump over some spikes or pits. This is what I did with my 3D FPS, The Enemies Within, and my colourful little platformer Bring Your Imagination to Life, and is what we will put into place today. Of course, all games are different in some way, and so all game tutorials also have to be different, but note that what I'll be showing you can be applied to almost anything you've made. So here I have this very simple scene where my player can jump and move left and right. His goal is to avoid these strange looking spiky monsters. Monsters. Let me now teach the player these basic moves by first explaining him how to move left and right, then show him how to jump, and lastly face him off with some epic obstacle challenge. So I'll make a new empty game object called Tutorial Manager, and then make a C -sharp script also called Tutorial Manager that I'll drag and drop onto my empty game object and open it up. I'll start by making a game object array called pop-ups. In it, I'll drag and drop all of the game's key instructions, such as move left and right with the arrow keys, or jump with the up arrow. I'll also make an int variable called popup index. In my update function, I'll check whether my popup index is equal to zero. If it is, that means the tutorial has just started. And so in my case, the first thing I want to teach the player is how to move left and right with the arrow keys. So obviously, I want my first pop-up instruction to be displayed in the game view. This way, the player knows what to do. I'll do so by making a for loop. Note that the syntax for this loop can be automatically generated by double pressing tab on your keyboard. And so I'll want to loop through each and every element in my pop-ups array. And if i is equal to the pop-ups index we are currently at, I'll display the pop-up in my array with that index using set active true and hide all pop-ups that don't have that index because I don't want my scene getting covered up with instructions. So in short, if my pop-up index is equal to zero, then the first pop-up in my array will be displayed and all the others hidden. If it's equal to one, then the second element in my array will be displayed and the others hidden and so on. Now that we've put that into place, I'll head back to my if statement and wait until the player hits the left and right arrow keys. Once he's done that, awesome, he understood how to move left and right, and so I'll move on to the next rule, jumping, by simply incrementing pop-up index of 1, and so I'll make an else if statement checking whether indeed pop-up index is equal to 1. In other words, if the player is at the jumping phase of the tutorial, if that's the case, then I'll wait until he hits the up arrow 
which will reassure me that he's understood how to jump. And then once again, I'll increment pop-up index of one. So if pop-up index is equal to two, now that the player has understood how to move and jump, I'll get him facing a couple obstacles to put his newly acquired knowledge into practice. I've actually already made a simple spawner script that instantiates these spiky obstacles. And so all I need to do is enable the object with the spawner script attached to it when pop-up index is equal to two. With that said, I'll make a public game object variable called spawner and activate it as soon as pop-up index is equal to two. Heading back into Unity, I'll lock the inspector so as to easily drag and drop my pop-ups into the array and I'll then drag and drop the spawner game object into that empty slot. And of course, disable it, since we don't immediately want obstacles spawning in game. And by hitting play, you'll see that as soon as I hit the left or right arrow keys, the tutorial manager will move on to the next part of the process. And then finally, the obstacles. Now, you might want to wait a few seconds before spawning those obstacles in game, just to leave the player some time to read the instructions, in which case all you need to do is make a float variable called wait time that I'll set equal to 2 for example, and then check right here whether wait time is less or equal to 0. If it is, then we can activate the obstacle spawner, if not, we will slowly decrease that wait time value using minus equals time dot delta time. And now, two seconds will pass before obstacles spawn in game. You might also want to lock what the player can do when the game starts. In other words, not allow the player to jump until he's first moved left or right. In a very simple game like this, this isn't really necessary. But in a more complex strategy game, for example, this can be very handy, stopping the player from accidentally performing performing some complex action, he might have no clue how to then handle. So to put this into place, I'll simply make a public variable of type player called player, and in my start function, I'll set the player's jump force equal to zero. This will stop him from jumping in the air, and then when the time comes for him to learn how to jump, I'll simply set jump force back to its normal value, which in my case is eight. And there we go, that's more or less how I code out my game's tutorials. Now again, more recently, I've been able to take it easy using interactive tutorials. The reason being my games are pretty simple to understand and can be explained with a few basic images. But if your creation features mechanics and interactions, you feel need explaining, you can definitely try using these techniques. Obviously, don't abuse with pop-ups to the point of hand-holding. Forcing the player to perform some simple action with a pop-up every two seconds, actions he's probably already understood a long time ago will feel very annoying. Creating game tutorials is, as I said at the start of the video, really challenging. That's why I would love to make more videos on the topic, perhaps more from a design point of view. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video and want to support me and my channel, then hitting the like and subscribe buttons would be awesome. If you want to be absolutely amazing, you can also help me out via Patreon a great platform that lets you pitch in a couple dollars and in so doing, gets me continuing to make regular game dev content. And so these are the top supporters that have already done so. All right, thanks again, stay tuned, cheers. <laughs>